Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. Uh, today is Wednesday the 6th of May. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 135 Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord, you that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Make music to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He brings up the clouds from the ends of the earth, he makes lightning with rain and brings the winds out of his treasuries. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of man and beast. He went, sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings, Sion, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan gave their land as a heritage, a heritage for Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever and shall be remembered throughout all generations, for the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are but silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. Eyes have they but they cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them shall become like them. And so will all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. 
O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord from Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Wise and gracious God, save us from the idols of our hearts and keep us in your living presence, that we may become a people for your praise. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 33. The Lord said to Moses, Go leave this place, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, or I would consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard these harsh words, they mourned, and no one put on ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I should go up among you, I will consume you. So now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with it to you. Therefore the Israelites stripped themselves of their ornaments, from Mount Horeb onwards. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each of them at the entrance of their tents, and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them, at the entrances of their own tents. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and have also found favour in my sight. Now, if I have found favour in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favour in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My fire will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here, for how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we, will sh we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favour in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and show mercy on whom I shall show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one can see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Here ends the first reading. A Song of the New Creation I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the desert, and rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, reading from verse 15 to verse 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people, but Herod the ruler who had been reduced buked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptised, and, and when Jesus also had been baptised, and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the second reading. The Responsory Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour. Born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and a shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. We have our prayers of intercession. In response to my words, Lord, hear us, please reply, Lord, graciously hear us. We begin by praying for the day and its tasks. We 
pray, Lord, that you would give us pause to reflect on what we do and why we do it. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us in this period of lockdown to lead ordered and productive lives, taking the opportunity to attend to jobs which we've neglected and to cultivate relationships, albeit on the computer or by telephone, which we may have not attended to as we ought to have done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the world and its needs. It's odd that we have received so little international news or domestic news other than the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you would inspire the hearts and minds of those charged with giving advice to government leaders over how to emerge out of the lockdown, the wisdom they need to know not only what to do, but how to communicate it to the wider public. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church and her life. We pray in particular, Lord, for VE Day this Friday and that you would help us as churches to put on services that will, even within these constraints, be meaningful, not only to the rapidly diminishing few who experience those events, but also those of us who have never experienced war firsthand. That you would give us pause to reflect upon the events 75 years ago and their significance for us today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, that you will give power to our testimonies to the risen Christ, especially at this time where perhaps the country at large is contemplating its more own mortality more profoundly than it has had cause to do in recent times. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be men and women of conviction who believe in the resurrection from the dead and the possibility of new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick in body, mind and spirit and commend them to you, asking that you would heal them from all that oppresses them. We pray, Lord, in particular for Paul Child following his recent spell in hospital, asking that he would recover quickly. We pray also, Lord, for those who have been bereaved. And we pray today especially for the family and friends of David Pike whose funeral service will be held at Canley Crematorium this morning. We pray that you would be with Eunice and their sons, Simon and John, as they pay their last respects to their father. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. the collect of the day. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, 
raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the light of life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we pray for those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.